Today we're going to start Unit 6, and before we move forward, you might be asking, hey, where did Unit 5 go? Well, to be honest, it's a data unit, and so our scatter plots and trend lines are part of that unit. We just pulled them into Unit 4, and the other part of Unit 5, those data topics have been moved um, by the high school into geometry, which is good because we've rarely had time to get to them in 8th grade, so you're not missing anything. Um, so as we start, we're going to start talking about systems of linear equations. And today we're going to learn how to solve a system of linear equations using graphing. Now what you should have in front of you are the six um, graphs that I asked you to do to graph you know, both lines on the same um, coordinate plane. And that needs to be here because as we go through, we're going to use those six examples. And it makes this video go really fast. So if you haven't done that, you want to pause right now and have done that. Um, I'm going to call it a worksheet, but it was just to make sure you had the graphs ready to go for this video. So the first one, you should have graphed the red and the blue line on the same set. And we're going to we're going to talk about what this is in just a second. So we'll come back to this one. Now, before we go back to that example one, I just want to give you an example here of a real world example of what we're doing. We're actually gonna start with the, you know, like why do we have to know this stuff? Um, so what this is, is the uh, Nintendo Switch. And I'm just saying, you know, hey, Mario Kart 8, they come out with an example for the Nintendo. And um, we're gonna kind of look at this graph and kind of see what is it telling us. So title important, Mario 8, game sales and costs. And this would be, you know, the Switch. So we've got a green line and a blue line here. We're just trying to figure out what they are. So this I can see is money, million up to 4 million. And out here, 10, 20, 30, be careful. That's the number of units sold in thousands. So the first point we have to think about is what is this green line right here? Well, if you look at the title, you know, one of these is going to be the sales and one is going to be the cost. So if you have zero units sold, you make zero. That to me sounds like sales. That's the money that's coming in to um, you know Nintendo as you sell those units. So don't forget, though, that these are 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 and so forth. Now, the blue line, therefore, must be the cost. And you might be saying to yourself, you know, why does it start up here? Well, basically, before you even sell the first unit, you've spent a lot of money in salaries and development and all kinds of things. And to be honest, I have no idea. I can hardly imagine what the cost would be before, you know, before the game starts. So, and, and those costs will continue as people continue to sort of update the game. Uh, if they are physical copies of the game, there are actually materials involved. So, you know, that that can, those costs can continue to kind of go up. So the question is, this is a systems. This is what your graph should look like, two lines. And I'm kind of questioning what this point is right here. So basically, we've talked about this before. So this right here is the money coming in. You might remember that. And this is the money going out and where they meet. Do you remember what that was called? Hopefully you said the break even point. So basically, if you look at this blue line and that's the money going out, and this is the money coming in, this whole tr sort of triangular piece is a loss. You spent more than you made. So this is, you know, and your loss gets smaller and smaller the more you sell. Soon as you go past the break even point, the sales are riding on top of the cost and this sort of triangular region, if you kind of pulled it out, is now called profit. So do you think this point is important? You better believe it, right? Because if we don't get to that point, then the company lost money. So every CEO, that's the chief executive officer, every CFO, the chief financial officer, are keeping an eye on, you know, what do they have to sell in order to basically break even, make the money back, and move into profit. So I just want you to see that as we move forward. Um, today, we'll be looking at some graphs, and, you know, they're not going to be in the millions and the thousands, but this is basically the same analysis that we're doing. So we're going to solve a system of equations by graphing, and you've actually already started this. Oh, by the way, it is in your book. 
It is uh, chapter seven, section one, in case you need it. To solve a system means that you're going to solve two equations simultaneously. That means at the same time, um, the ordered pairs that you get, that point where the two lines meet is called the solution because it solves both equations. So if you put the X and the Y into both equations, um, they will work. You know, they will check. We're going to talk about that in a second. So basically, you've already started this. You need to be able to graph the two lines. So sometimes you might have to solve them for y, put them in uh, slope-intercept form to make them easy, or standard form. And one or the other might be a better way to graph. This section is really important about accuracy. So you don't want to be sloppy. you got to use graph paper. You've got to use a straight edge, a ruler. You've got to put your points in the right spot. So sometimes one form or the other would be more accurate. And we'll see that in a minute as well. You're going to graph both equations, which you've already done six times, on the same coordinate paper using that graph paper, using the straight edge. And now we're going to go further and you're going to look at where did the two lines meet. And you're going to estimate the coordinates. You're going to look at the graph and say, well, looks like they met at 2 comma 1. And then you're going to check that in both equations algebraically because it's really easy sometimes to graph them and kind of wiggle a line a little bit and actually have it not be precise. So we're going to check them. And for graphing, you have to check it in both equations. So right now, you've kind of done hopefully one and two. Now, if you've graphed them wrong, then they're going to meet at the wrong point. Your check's not going to work. So when your check doesn't work, either you graph the lines wrong, you somehow read the point wrong off of the graph, you substitute them wrong. You know, there's a lot of little things you can do wrong um, to sort of not have the proper solution. So let's go back to that number one. So you should have graphed these two lines, and I'm using color to kind of show you, but this one is already in slope intercept. So the intercept is negative six, rise three, run one, rise three, run, run. And it's really important that you make your lines nice and long here. Otherwise, sometimes they won't meet. Don't make them short and stubby. Now, the next one you is in standard form. So you could use your intercepts here. So if you cover over the y, the x-intercept would be 2. And if you cover over the x, make it equal to 0, the y-intercept is 2. And then you draw your line. And where do they meet? Well, right now, I think the solution of this system is 2 comma 0. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that. I'm going to put 2 in for x and 0 in for y and check it in the red. And I'm going to put 2 in for x and 0 in for y. Big mistake is to put them in for the wrong variable, like you're not thinking, so just be careful. So I do that in the red line. And I get 0 equals 6 minus 6, which is 0. And I put it into the blue line, and 2 plus 0 is 2. So they both work. I've got the right solution. That's how easy this can be. All right, so let's go into number 2. You should already have it. So these are both in y equals uh, mx plus b. So again, use your y-intercept of negative 1, and then rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1. I kind of recommend using that slope a lot. Sometimes once you've got the first line, you can use um, kind of the slope on the second line until you hit the first line. I'll show you that in a second. And then the second line is going to start at positive 9, but be careful. Remember to go down 3 and over 1. All right, so let me just go forward to show you those two lines. So what I'm saying is once I had the blue line, if I start at 9 and go down 3 and run 1 and down 3 and run 1, boom, I've hit the other line. So you can keep using the slope, which will make you feel confident about your estimate of the intersection, which should be 2 comma 3. You must check it in both. So I'm going to put it in the blue equation and check it. And I'm going to put it in the red equation and check it. And they both check out. So I feel 100% confident that the solution of this system is 2 comma 3. Okay, so here's the next one, which was number 3. Um, and this one, you can say, hey, it's in standard form. Um, the problem with standard form here is that one of the intercepts is not in the crosshairs. So from an accuracy standpoint, 
it might be better to solve it for y. So I subtracted 2x and I divided everybody by negative 3. And now if I plot the negative 3 y-intercept and go up 2 over 3, I'm working on the crosshairs rather than I think the x-intercept would have been 4.5. I mean, you can still do that, but the accuracy, it's so important on this one to graph it properly that sometimes it might be easier in one form or the other to get the points right on the crosshairs, basically. And then do you remember what this line is? Okay, hey, wait a minute, there's only one variable. Okay, it's a weirdo. Now, which weirdo is it, horizontal or vertical? If you can't remember, remember that every point on this line has an x of 3. So 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 5, and pretty quickly you can see that that's a vertical line. So basically, you should have plotted these this way. So if I take a look at my line, see here's the negative three, and I go up two and to the right three, and I'm already hitting that vertical line. So my estimate is three negative one. Now the check for this line is stupid. I, you know, for granted, it just, yeah, three equals three. And the other line, I'm gonna to remember to put it back in the original, not what you affected just in case you goofed it up. And I check it and it works. So remember to graph, you know, you can use the um, intercepts, which would have been tough for this one a little bit, or you can use y equals mx plus b. So it's either standard form or slope intercept that's going to make it easy to graph. Okay, let's keep going. So before we move on, there's a different kind of question we can ask. So, you know, is 2, 1, is the point 2, 1 the solution of, you know, a system? Now, you really don't have to graph this one. You can basically just do a check. So if you put two in for X and one in for Y in both lines, and if it makes both true, then it would be a solution. So in other words, you know, there is the top line. I put two in for X and I put one in, I do the math and I'm like, yay, okay. So right now I know that the point two comma one is on the top line. If it's also in the bottom line, it would be a solution to the system. If it only makes one true, it's not a solution to the system. And I put the X and the Y in, and it's true, so that is a solution. Now, would 2, 1 be a um, solution to a different system? So same thing. Put the 2, put the 1, which we just saw over here, right? And now a different line, and I put the 2 in for X and the 1, and you'll see that doesn't work. So that's not a solution to the system. That point 2 comma 1 is on the top line. It doesn't reside on this line. So basically, if you look at these as being streets and like houses on the street, you know, this house 2 comma 1 is on this street, but it's not on this street. But here it's on both. So it's like in the corner, you know, like a corner of two roads kind of thing. So now the weirdos can happen, and you probably saw that as you were graphing. So we can have a no solution, and that would be a system of linear equations that are parallel would have no solution. And if you weirdly go to graph it, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, this is the same line, just two different ways to write it, kind of like Mrs. Woodruff and Mrs. W, or two ways to kind of think of me, um, you can sometimes you know, write two equations, not even realize that they're the same line, and all of a sudden, you, you do. Um, infinitely many solutions is the answer there, okay? And oh, by the way, this is also called coincident lines, also known as coincident lines. So you had to do number four and number five, and you probably already know that this happened. So number four, kind of looking at this, this one's easy to graph, but this one, solve it for y, and you're going to notice they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. Here they are. And so they are parallel. If two lines have the same slope, we already know that that makes them parallel. Um, and, you know, they have different y-intercepts. One is going through zero. The other one is going through negative two. So they are parallel. And so you would say no solution. No check. We're done. The next weirdo would be number five. And so this one's easy to graph. Um, this one, not so much, right? And they're kind of hiding that special case in here. So let's just go over to the graphs. You know, so you go to graph this one. And if you solve this guy, so you add 10x to both sides and then divide everybody by 2, your equation looks identical. 
So it's basically the same line. You don't check it. Every point on one line is a solution of the other. There are infinitely many. It's just calling a street by the name, like Colonel Ledger Highway, CLH. Um, you know, it's the same road. All right, so the last one, I just wanted to make sure <laughs> you guys love these so much. I said, eh, I think we better make sure we remember our special cases of lines. So the top one and the bottom one, y equals six. What kind of line is this? One of the variables is out, so it is either horizontal or vertical. My trick, again, is remember that every point on this line has to have a y of six. So like one comma six and four comma six and eight comma six. Pretty quickly, you see this is a horizontal line. We just talked about vertical a minute ago. It would be a vertical line. Boom, they are perpendicular because one is horizontal and one is vertical. They meet at the point, shockingly enough, negative one six, negative one six uh, is the solution. To check it, stupid checks, okay? You gotta put the six in for the Y and you gotta put the negative one in for the X and shockingly enough, it works. So I just wanted to get those perpendicular and parallel, uh, perpendicular vertical and horizontal lines back in your brain. Okay, so in conclusion, how do you solve a system of linear equations by graphing? The first thing you need to do is graph, well, make sure that they can be graphed, that they're either in y equals mx plus b or standard form. Um, you're going to graph both equations on the same coordinate plane using a straight ed edge and graph paper. Accuracy matters, uh, especially it depends on how the lines are oriented, but sort of they usually meet, if they're going to meet in one point, there's kind of an x, if you know what I mean. The kind of tighter that x is, the easier it is to have it plotted incorrectly and, and get the solution wrong. So just as accurate as you can be plotting the points using graph paper, using a straight edge. Um, you're going to estimate the coordinates of the point of intersection. So you kind of look, where do they meet? And then you have to, with graphing, you must check it in both. Because if you don't check it in both, it could make one true and not the other. So be a house on one street, but not be the house in the corner. So you always have to check it in both. So that's kind of what we're doing today, doing some graphing, finding the point of intersection, and checking it, guys. You are now being the CEO of Nintendo and finding the break-even point. More on that to come. Have a great day, everybody.